Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, let's see, today is Sunday, November the 15th, and it's 3.39 p.m. Oh, gosh, I know I say this a lot, and we, you know, I ask you for prayer for people and myself and everything, but tomorrow I go to the third eye doctor. They called yesterday, and I didn't turn, I didn't, my stupid phone won't show that I've got a message waiting. Oh, no, it's supposed to, but it doesn't. But last night, I checked my messages, just for the heck of it. And there was a message from the eye doctor saying if they didn't hear from me by 6 p.m., they would have to cancel my appointment. I said, I have to get a ride. I said, please don't cancel my appointment. I said, I, I made it online. And then I, they sent me an email confirming it, and I filled in all the information, like history and... I sent that in, and then they texted me, put a C to confirm or stop, to stop getting messages. So I put a C, right, and I hit uh, reply. Well, my phone, for some reason, if the number is not in my contacts, I think this is why, it won't send it. It will not let me reply with just a letter. I should have tried writing the word confirm. I'm going to try that next time. Anyway, so it wouldn't confirm, wouldn't confirm. Like it kept saying, did not send, try again, try again. So then I get that phone call yesterday. Okay, I have a ride lined up. I begged them, please don't cancel my appointment, you know. But I'll, figure, I'll figure it out in the morning, but because they're closed today. I really want to see better. Okay, now, this is a word, I believe, from the Lord. This is a person who submitted this, and is, I don't recognize the name as ever having submitted a, a message to Dawn for her newsletter. They may have, and I just don't remember it, but it's not a regular not that that doesn't mean anything or means anything special, but uh, the person's name is Christian Robert. And it's titled, I Will Fulfill Every Word, no November 11th, 2020, 11.49. Date received is March and August of 2020. So he got part of it in March, part in August. And I guess he held on to it. Well, this is what it says. Take all things to the Lord. If you're not sure, if you don't believe it, that's okay. But remember what the Lord said. That in the end days, I will pour out my spirit on all mankind and I, I think it ought to have added in there, and those who will receive him, meaning my Holy Spirit, will prophesy. Your daughters, your, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions, and on my all servants I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. Let me put my feet up here. Get this thing level. All right, let me check my position. <sighs> okay, Jasper, you gotta stop barking. <laughs> what a look! <laughs> oh, I wish I could have snapped that one real quick. It's <laughs> like, what? I'm not barking. Yes, you were. You were barking. Don't bark. Okay, I'm making a video. Okay, come on up here. You can get up here too. All right, now let's get going. This is some serious business. Seriously. All right. It looks and feels like Biden's declared victory 
has led some of God's people to feel confused, disappointed, and some are wondering if some of God's prophets missed it or if they are simply false prophets. Look, that's a pause. The first thing I said when my friend came and I said, come on in, she comes in, she said, Biden's, Biden won it. I said, no, he didn't. Said, yeah, he did, they're calling it. I said, there's just too many prophecies out there that said otherwise, that Trump was going to win. She said, well, uh, they're saying it, Biden won. <laughs> that was the first thing I said. Too many prophets have said otherwise. Or people have received words, dreams, or visions that said otherwise. Okay? Alright, so moving on. However, the Lord spoke to me in March of 2020 and August of 2020 and said unequivocally, no matter how much darkness there is in the world, my word will not fall to the ground. I will fulfill every word. I will fulfill every vision. What I say that I will do. Now pause again. We all know the evil, evil dragon devil and can cause his lying spirits to give us words, dreams, possibly, vi well, yeah, they can give visions. Prime example, uh, Our Lady of Fatima, or Fatima, as some people say, and that might be right, but I was brought up in a Catholic church and school, and they said Fatima. All right, anyway, that's neither here nor there. That was an apparition from the devil. Okay? Mary does not appear to people. All right. So, yes, they can give visions and words, dreams also. If you're open, if you have doors open, you're a messenger and you have doors open, such as pride or jealousy or unforgiveness and you won't deal with it you have a door open and this is how you can get a false word okay I have received false words and the Lord taught me why and what to do about it in my case it was lack of uh, spiritual warfare I wasn't anointing I wasn't pleading the blood of Jesus I wasn't Dealing with my armor every single day, you know, putting it on once in a while. Well, when you're a messenger of the Lord, you have to do that, even though it's not a phys you don't see it. You just have to do it because it's a spiritual thing. You're 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 battling the unseen world. Okay, moving on. He says, no matter how much darkness there is in the world my word will not fall to the ground I will fulfill every word I will fulfill every vision what I say that I will do I will bring it to pass every word will come to pass not one of the words I have spoken will fall to the ground without me fulfilling it. It also looks and feels like our days resemble other times in biblical history where it appeared that it would be impossible or at least very unlikely for God's words to come to pass. Now I think this last sentence is this person, Christian Robert, adding, what the Lord spoke to him was just the part that ends with, 
will fall to the ground without me fulfilling it. All right? Because then he said it's unlikely for God's words to come to pass. That sentence has to be Christians. All right. He, he goes on to give us examples. The virgin birth. God told a young woman who was a virgin that she would give birth to a child and that the child would come from the Holy Spirit. She would not be with any man. Luke 1 35. Does that sound realistic? It does not. But she became pregnant and gave birth to Jesus Christ. God fulfilled his word and purpose faithfully despite the fact that such a conception is biologically impossible. Okay, let's take Jesus' death and resurrection. Jesus was telling his disciples that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders, chief priests, and scribes be killed, and be raised again the third day. That's in Matthew 16, 21. However, he was now dead in the grave. It looked like it was all over with the plan of them becoming fishers of men. And they were planning to go back to their normal lives and ordinary routines prior to his appearance. They were depressed, saddened, and disappointed. It looked like all hope was lost. Yeah, that didn't last long though, did it? Three days, that was it. Um, it looked like all hope was lost. But there was a great earthquake. Jesus was raised from the dead. And in fact, many graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Matthew twenty seven fifty two. God fulfilled his word and purpose faithfully despite death and the appearance of everything being lost. See, there was an er this party's got a, a little wrong. There was an earthquake when he died, and the graves were opened, but the bodies didn't come out until. The earthquake, they say there must have been an earthquake to roll away that stone. Well, um, I believe in the supernatural. The supernatural, an angel could have rolled that stone away. At any rate, that's when the bodies came out of the grave. When Jesus arose from the dead. He's got that right. So what is the message here? God will be faithful to fulfill his word and his purpose no matter how anything looks. No matter what the news say and no matter what anyone chooses to believe or not. God spoke to prophets about Trump's role in the end times Wait a minute. Hold on. Did I miss this before? I'm straining to I'm straining to see Okay. All right. God spoke to prophets about Trump's role in the end times. Right, God or Jesus or the Holy Spirit about civil war and many other things. With Biden's declared victory by the news, 
and the riots decreasing, it certainly looks like most of these words from the Lord are no longer valid. Perhaps the prophets were wrong, or God changed his mind? I don't think so. I don't either, brothers and sisters in Christ. I just don't believe it. God will fulfill each and every word, no matter how dead, hopeless, dark, impossible, unrealistic, or unfeasible anything looks. It is written, Isaiah 14, 24. Okay, um, Isaiah 14, 24. The Lord of hosts hath sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. In fact, I feel in my spirit that this season right now is just a big test for many of God's people who is going to have belief and believe that God will do what he said and who will fall into unbelief who is going to be like Abraham who believed God regardless of how impossible things look and it was counted unto him for righteousness Romans 4 3 and who is going to be like Thomas and say, I'll believe it when I see it. John twenty twenty nine. As I am typing up, notice that even though Thomas had trouble believing that Jesus was alive, even though he had told them that he would return, did he not say he would return. But all of them, all of them lacked faith. They all had to run to the grave. Not all. Peter, Peter and John, probably James, ran because Mary and I think the two Marys saw him first, went to them, told them Jesus is alive. They had to run and see it for their self. Did they not? Well, Thomas wasn't thrown out of the twelve, was he? The Lord understands. But still, we're supposed to believe when he said something. Now, where was I? God spoke to prophets about Trump's role in the end times. Okay, I read that. In fact, I feel in my spirit that this season right now is just a big test for many of God's people. Who is going to have belief and believe? Okay, I read that. And who will fall into unbelief? Who is going to be like Abraham? Who believed God regardless of how impossible things look and it was counted unto him for righteousness Romans 4 3 and who is going to be like Thomas and say I'll believe it when I see it John 20 29 as I am typing up this post this scripture came to me but without belief it is impossible to please him. Well, really the verse, I learned it without faith. It is impossible to please him. Hebrews 11.6 Faith is believing. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Is that the same thing as belief? 
the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I think so. I could look it up. Whatever translation this is, belief, it's probably because it's one of the words that is under that word in the Strong's Concordance. But he goes on to say, brothers and sisters, make a decision to believe what God said, no matter what. Trust God and his power, for he is almighty. Just because something is not happening the way many thought it would, does not mean it will not happen. Have belief in him and his word. Okay, this, this person, Christian, he's right, but what, what we're, to believe what he's saying is right takes us believing that this paragraph up here he received from the word, from, from the Lord, the, the part that was from the Lord, no matter how much darkness there is in the world, my word will not fall to the ground. I will fulfill every word. I will fulfill every vision. Well, we know that there has been so many false prophets and false messengers. And oh my goodness, we were reading one last night that was like every single sentence we were like, wait, that's not of God. We all knew it. It was obvious because it went against Scripture. Now, Scripture doesn't tell us that Donald Trump in 2020 will win the election. Of course not. Not every single thing you hear it can be backed up by Scripture, but let me tell you what can be. There, what Scripture? Let me, let me pull it up. Let's see. I'll go to Google because I know that. Let's see. He is the. Yeah, E I G H but is of the seven. Even he is the eighth and is of the seven. All right, now, if Joe Biden was the president-elect and gets inaugurated on January 20th, guess what? He becomes the eighth king. All right, Revelation 17.11. I'm going to read the Berean. Let's see if I can make this bigger. I know how I can. This is, what did I say? Revelation 17, 11. Let me go up here. No, not that. That's weather. Revelation 17, 11. Yeah. Let's make it even bigger. Oh, yeah, there you go. Now. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. Okay, let me back up. Verse 10. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. See, I thought Donald Trump would be out of there already. What's a short space? He's halfway through a two-year term. Is that a short space? Maybe when, in, when it comes to terms like uh, most presidents get two terms, not all, a lot of them. 
people tend to vote for the one that's already in there because he's got experience now. And this is just really bad. All right. So this is talking about our presidents. There are seven kings, five are fallen, and one. Now how, how, um, at least this is what a lot of Bible studiers, I'm going to call them scholars, because that's what they are, have gotten out of this. Not me, myself. But when he cometh, he must continue a short space. That is supposed to be Donald Trump. And if Biden got in, then he would be the eighth. And he can't be the eighth if he has to be of the seven. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven is of the seven and goeth into perdition. Jasper. Woof. Good. That's better. Let's see what it says for perdition. Apollea. Apollea. G684. Perdition, destruction, goes into waste, damnable, to die with, oh, if you use it with G1519, it means you to die, perish, and pernicious. Outline of biblical usage is destroying, utter destruction, under that, it says, of vessels to a perishing ruin, destruction of money or the destruction which consists of eternal misery in hell. All right, so I tend to agree with the people that say that has to do with our presidents. And Jimmy Carter was the first of the seven. And that, I can't remember why. Why they, he was the first one to do something. But if you all have any other, if you've heard any other explanation of this scripture about the seven kings and the eighth would be of the seven, who that means. Because I've, I've read, oh, the first was this pharaoh, and the second was this uh, king, and the third was this Roman emperor, you know, like that. And I'm like, well, how, how do they get that? But, but Obama could be of one of those if, who was it? Was it Akhenaten? One of those pharaohs. He looks like him. Some people say they got some of his, that Pharaoh's DNA and cloned him and made Obama. Now that, I just, I don't get that from God. I haven't heard anyone else say I received that as a word from the Lord. It was more of a from research, they put it together, and this is what they figured out. So, I'm going to end this here because it's long enough. And you all tell me what you think about this word or about who are the seven kings. If they're not the presidents, who are they? Have you heard of anyone else giving a, a good analogy of who those seven kings are? You see, if you believe it's the seven presidents, it cannot be Biden. Okay, so I'll plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over the internet connections, oh, over each and every one of us, our devices, and our internet connections.
And with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.